my gosh. And I see. So first of all, welcome everybody. I'm Iris for Cashmere Goat, and we are having our um, Scudic Bay Knit Along meetup. And what's really, really fun here is I'm seeing some people on this Zoom who I saw in the goat this morning because they were on the sailing cruise that went out on the schooner Angelique. And um, so they sailed in this morning. It was beautiful blue sky. The, the breeze was brisk out there. Everybody on the boat had to like take off layers and uh, readjust once they were land bound again. Um, but I see Tracy and Tracy was in the store and my friend Barbarina, I can see she's her cameras off, but um, I think they're on the road back to Vermont where they live. So welcome back sailors. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I had to get out of, I had to shower. <laughs> <laughs> Just had to. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. So you all, all of these sailors, they rolled in and they were just all glowing and even though you know uh they were they were saying oh our our, our we didn't take the shower i feel a little crunchy they all just look so beautiful they had that ocean glow on their face <laughs> and that relaxation oh oh wow well so let's hear maybe we can just do a little check-in so if you want to share a little bit about your progress or if you have a, a question that you might have about the pattern, um, maybe just say your name and where you're coming from today. Oh my gosh, looks like Bev has a swatch. Bev, let's hear from you first. Let's see that swatch. Look at you. I I just finally got started today. Where am I? Here we are. There you are. There you and are. Oh. The, this is the, um, this is just beautiful. This is, I can't believe how soft this stuff is. It's the, um, on the round, the plush DK and it's Wanderer. Oh. It's just beautiful. So, so I finally got started and, you know, I spent most of the weekend, well, Saturday anyway, wondering if this big dead tree next to my house was going to come down and on it. And Rick, of course, was away. So, oh, All right. we got uh, well over three inches of rain. I never lost power, but I live near Route One, and there are two relay stations here. So, if one goes down, the other one picks me up. So, I was uh, very fortunate. Very fortunate. We had one of the lobstermen's boat sank. He got caught in one of the oh. rip tides and a rogue wave that just tipped his boat over. But both he and his stern man were rescued and. Oh. And the boat sank, but they're okay. Minor injuries. Oh my God, so. God then, that's terrifying. There was a man in Searsport who was killed when he fell on his car. And they couldn't get to him because they had to wait for the power to be turned off because the tree was connected to the power lines and brought those down. Oh, to so. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh. So there, there were some real tragedies, but it was better than it could have been. So, except for those because. Families. You're up around the Scudic Peninsula, and yep. so that's was that sort of like point zero, like where the 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 hurricane was landing, making landfall. It actually made landfall right in Nova Scotia. Um, those people can't win. Um, mm. First, it was the wildfires. Now they're getting hurricanes. So, um, so we did get a lot of rain, as I said, and the winds were gusting at sixty-five miles per hour at times. But that Whoa. was better than originally forecast this time last week when the hurricane watch came up while we were doing this. So, wow. But, you know, Iris, they're saying that because of the warming climate, we're going to be getting more of this. Mm. I, did, I, I know I, it. I know it. So. Well, we've been talking, we don't have a generator here at my house, and we've definitely been talking about probably needing one, and we're looking into some options. Um, I was, I've been reading up on these ones that can be recharged solar, mm -hmm. uh, so we'll see what we figure out, but I'm so glad that you're okay, and that that big tree didn't fall on you, and look, you've got your swatch, and your beautiful yarn, and life is good. Life, life is good. Yay, Bev. 
Um, I see that it looks like Mary Ellen, and I'm not sure which Mary Ellen. Maybe it's Mary Ellen, um, Mary Ellen Mulbear. No, Mary Ellen. No, that's Susan Mulbear. It's Mary <laughs> Don't tell me. It's another Mary Ellen M. Mar Mortola. Mortola. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, so you've got a question about page five. Let's chat about it. Okay. So, um, you know, way on the bottom there where it starts to say, repeat rows one, two, four. Um, mm -hmm. and, then, and then I'm doing um, four more times, right? Okay. Um, but then repeats one to two, zero times. So that seems weird to me. Um, I'm just not sure how to, <clears throat> how to interpret that whole sentence you know work to desired ending after row two or row four um yep. 20 rows mm -hmm. yeah i didn't i didn't i tried to add it up and it didn't seem to add up correctly so just wanted interpretation of that particular sentence okay um so i'm going to give you my interpretation and if anybody else wants to weigh in uh, folks can do so. So I, I read that as um, because of the size you've chosen, when it comes to that repeat rows one to two, because yours says zero, you're going to not do that at all. Just skip right on by that. Um, okay. And then what it's saying is, is this is the place where you could add length here if you want a longer sweater or if you're longer torsoed or whatever this is the place that you would do that if you wanted that kind of length and then that very last little sentence at the bottom about the mid body shaping with the v-neck that's the thing we talked about a little bit last week where basically the that shaping happens over depending on your size again it's like, uh, it could be maybe a total of eight, 10 rows, something like that, maybe 12. And you see that on the next page. And so, so that essentially is you're, you're shaping at the underarms, you're doing the slip, slip knit or the knit two together on either side for that mid body shaping. And that's what's forming the V on the front of your sweater. So okay as an easy way to think about estimating, you know, you're, as you're trying to estimate your length and do I need more length? Do I not just, I would look on that next page in the section called mid body shaping V neck. And you know, there's, um, it's like a, it's a, it's a two row, um, shaping row, kind of a, a shaping row one shaping row two. And if you figure out with your size, how many times total are you repeating those two rows, including the first time you do it, that's going to give you your vertical row count. So for example, for me, when I added up my size, it was 10 rows. And so when I looked back at my sweater or looked at my swatch, I looked at that vertical distance of 10 rows and figured it was like a little, maybe an inch and a half ish or something for my size, something like that. And I... I added that on visually, you know, so I could be sure like, hey, yeah, it's still going to take an inch and a half more. I don't think I need more length here because I've got that inch and a half before I'm ready to split for the sleeves. Does that make sense? Not, not especially. I'll just take the next flight out to you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we would love that. But um, if you if you want, if you if you're like processing this after the zoom, and you are still confused, like send me an email, and I'll try to break it down in, into a typed way, if that would help. Yeah, that would be great. That'd be great. I okay. mean, I am, I am planning a trip to the New York area. So it's not so far. <laughs> it's not so far to just keep coming up to me and you can totally yeah, do just... that. <laughs> um but shoot me the email if you're confused so that i have that on my radar okay 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 i'll get okay. down to that that part i just finished the setup row on that page okay. so i'll get down there and see what happens thanks Great. so much yeah um remind us also where you're joining us from again mary oh i'm in salt lake city right and we're we're warm here today we're still in the 70s but they promised by the weekend 
will be in the 50s. And we had a lot of snow this year. Our hillsides are still green and they are never green this time of year. So wow. we're we're excited. I think we're going to actually have fall. <laughs> nice. Amazing. Great, great, great. Um, anybody else want to hop in with a hello where you're from and, and check in or ask a question? Uh, looks like I have Lori with a hand up. Hey, Lori, how are you? Yeah, hey, good. Yeah, I just, um, I'm loving the pattern. It's, you know, working out really well. Just one question. I know sometime um, last week, someone mentioned um, about a knitting app that they were using. And I was just wondering, because um, I went and looked out there, but I, I didn't really see and I wasn't quite sure about that. But do people use knitting apps on their phone to, you know, help with the knitting? And then the other question was um, that I had too, I would be really interested to know what some of the yarns are that everybody's working with. Mm. I have a Nora and it's, um, you know, I, I did a size up because it's, I'm, I tend to knit tight, um, but I saw a couple last week that I thought were so pretty that were like the blues and everything was, you know, really coming together tightly. And so those are, those are my two questions. So maybe in addition, in addition to introducing like your name, where you're from, how about you tell about your, just share your yarn when we're, when we're chatting. Um, yeah. And by the way, I'm at, Lori from Ashburn, Virginia. Awesome. Lori, so, it, it might've been yeah, me. Um, I'm Jenny from New Jersey, Maplewood, New Jersey. Um, I use a, a thing called Knit Companion, which is, um, it's an app on your computer, but you can also put it on your phone. And you can, um, uh, if it's a digital, like if it's a PDF, you can move it over from Ravelry or from your Dropbox. And then you can, um, like each page of the pattern is in there. And then you can sort of highlight the size you're making. You can make any notes that you want. If there are charts, you can pull them out like as a separate piece. Um, if anybody follows Very Pink Knitting, she does a great tutorial on it and um i've had it for probably two years um and i'm doing another sweater that's um a scandinavian with a lot of uh, uh stranded knitting and i'm finding it very helpful for that as well so who was uh, that you said you were following uh very pink knits um she's it's very pink it, it she's on um, instagram she's uh, a youtube channel she does a bi-weekly uh, podcast. And actually her, the girl who used to do her podcast has moved up to Maine. So now she's not doing it anymore. The girl, Casey. So, um, um, and so, yes. So I've gotten all the way up to the sleeve, the first sleeve. I, I survived blocking. So um, this is mine. Mm, and what's your yarn? Jenny? This is um, a North Light Fibers. They were from, um, I think, Block Island. And it's called Water Street. And they have just stopped making yarn. Um, there's oh. something in the family. There's something that it's real small, like family business. And um, they... Um, something happened within the family that's the, but there's a store here in New Jersey that was lucky enough to get all their excess yarn so um I had originally bought this thinking I was going to make hand warmers and when I saw this pattern I like ran over and said like I need six more skeins of yarn <laughs> so it's super super soft and um so here's the beginning of sleeve number one beautiful so so yeah, so pretty, so, pretty. it's really oh. really soft and it really um it it got softer when i when i did the um blocking so um i sent um alice a picture i had it on my blocking table and i had my laptop open cuz i had the measurements and i was like okay 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 so like <laughs> very precise <laughs> but i used to sew so you know i understand like sewing patterns you have to have everything precise that's awesome, Jenny. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I would just say before we move on to the next question too, yeah, Knit Companion. I know Pat uses something else that's like a, a counter app. Um, she was talking about last week, but I like Knit Companion too. I don't actually have the paid version. So I think with my free version, 
I was still able to integrate with Ravelry. So if I've got a digital pattern, it will pull it up right there. Um, and the I will make sure to link to the very pink tutorial about the Knit Companion because I think that is really helpful to just get your feet under you. But it's a great, you know, digital counter. The other feature that I think is really clever is they have figured out how to make your phone not go to sleep. So that when you're using the app, you don't have to wake up your phone. You can just, it's state, you know, so it's drawing the battery down. Definitely keep that in mind, but it, it, that's a, that's a super swell feature in my book. But there's also a way if you're working on, like I'm working on my MacBook and when I close it, there's a little, um, like three dots that you touch and that sends it to the i to iCloud, to Knit Companion. So, iCloud. so if I want to open it on my phone, It'll show it me sinks. exactly where I was. Yeah, it's yes, so good. Um, great. Well, I see that Susan's hand is up. Hi, Susan. Hey there, Susan from Hot New Orleans, Louisiana. Still in the nineties here. Um, here's. I just finished. I so I'm running behind, but I just finished the mid body. So, and I'm using Queensland. Um, mm. It's this real pretty green color. Oh know. my gosh, so pretty. I, I, I hope I get it finished. So, <laughs> and I will, <laughs> but not by next week. So I, I do have a question, probably a couple. It will probably turn into more than one. So I'm getting ready to do the mid body shaping and I haven't added any rows or anything else. I'm just literally going with the pattern for my size. So I, you know, I read ahead. So number one, how long can I leave my stitch markers in? Because it's ask, it's asking me when I separate the right front, the back and the left to take off four and five. And I've got like eight stitch markers in there to separate the little pattern mm -hmm. pieces. And I'd like to keep them in there until the end. <laughs> you do, you do you. Okay. you do you. As you do you. Yeah. Okay. Keep those markers in. And can I and even keep like marker four and five in, or does it really matter? I'll just keep them all because I guess I'll start decreasing and the count will get off or whatever. But um if they're a good visual like anchor for you, I think this pattern, I mean. For some of us, once we see the established pattern, we can do it visually. And for others of us, it's really reassuring to see those markers still in there. I don't know if anybody disagrees with that, but that would be my idea. Okay, good. So, and then when I get to the part that says, and maybe it will come to me, my daughter, she says it will, and we're actually knitting the same size. So I think I'm going to just go with what she says. Um where it says, make note of which row of the moss and double moss pattern you have just completed. I'm on page six, so that you can continue mm -hmm. the texture later for the front. Well, I, I haven't been counting any rows <laughs> um, <laughs> at all. So I guess I just like, when I'm finished, I just go, okay, I've done all of this and I only did the first row of moss or because I guess I'm only doing one and two, right? I'm not doing one, two, three, and four anymore. I'm just going back uh -huh. and forth between one and two. Is that what that means? Um, I think we might have Alice on here, in which case yeah. that would be a super <laughs> resource to have our designer answer that question. Alice, can you weigh in? I actually am just looking for where where in the pattern are you having the question? I'm on page six and I'm looking at the section that says separate right front, back and left front. Yeah. And that last sentence says, make note of which row of the moss and double moss pattern you have just completed. So in this, like in the whole mid body shaping, I'm only working rows one and two. I'm not doing rows three and four. So I'm just alternating between one and two, right? So is that where I need to go? Oh, wait, I'm finished. No, right? you're, you're going to continue in pattern as it was established. So in other words, where there is, you know, sort of the stockinette columns, you're going to continue that. Yeah. Where it's a single moss stitch, you're going to continue that. Then another column of stockinette. 
then another column of you know the double moss and right then stock and add or another column i believe so you're gonna kind of know that um and the question that you're asking about is because you want to make sure that the number or the you can even count the double moss blocks um, on one side and the other. If you haven't counted, don't worry about it. You can just kind of look at it and count how many boxes do I have of you know, okay. that moss and okay. make it the same on the other side. That's what the okay okay. I, I think I mean I think I'll I think I'll be okay. But you know how like you know how okay. on page five we. In the mid body, there was row one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four that we were basically repeating continuously for our size. Mm -hmm. Now it looks like in the mid body shaping, it's just row one and two over and over. Is that correct? Like yeah, I'm not fooling with three and four anymore. Do, yeah, so you're still gonna do the, um, the double moss, right? So, when you're in that double moss section, those are definitely one through four. Um, so okay, that would be, I think, the simplest way to describe what's happening. But as you're going through, you'll be able to sort of get a rhythm where you can see um, there's two knits, and then there are going to be two pearl bumps, two knits, two pearl bumps. And basically, you're going to follow that patterning Okay. on the double moss part which is you know you've got your single moss the column then the double moss right so those are the patternings that you're continuing to follow okay. and as you know i you said you know for some people it's intuitive and they just kind of look at it and they know what they're doing for others if you're feeling like you really need to track what row you're on one two three four that's fine too Okay. Okay. I'm going to. I think when you get there, you're going to be having like an app. Oh, okay. <laughs> gotcha. Thank you. But Susan, right now you're talking about the top of page seven where you're only doing two rows and you're doing just the back. No, I'm, no she was well, the first, uh, I'm, I, for me, it's page six. Okay. It says mid body shaping, creating the V neck opening. Okay. No, okay. A that's shaping row one, a shaping row two, and then it says repeat shaping rows one to two. For me, my size, it's going to be three times. So am I just, and I guess that's where, I mean, I know I'm working in pattern, but I'm just doing these, I, I guess I'm getting hung up on the shaping rows because I'm going, wait, well, where's row three and where's row four? <laughs> Yeah, I, I would probably just take it row by row as you're going and try not to overthink it because I feel like it's one of those like German short rows. They can get really complicated in our brains if we kind of overthink it. Okay. But if we just follow it along, it will come together. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> if it doesn't talk about it, row three and four right there, I'm not going to do row three and four. <laughs> Well, and it's it's really interesting. We've actually, I mean, we have, there's just so much positive regard for the pattern and people yeah. enjoying it, Alice, still. Oh, I like um, it a lot. I'm loving it. It's, it's so good. And and yet I will say there's a couple people for whom the double moss is a little tricky. And um, I think it sometimes also depends on the type of yarn you have, how easy it is for you to see, maybe your your relative, yeah, your stitch definition. Um, but there's definitely been people who are like, gosh, you know, double moss. It seems like it's just so easy, but my brain just sort of has a hiccup about it. So that was just interesting feedback. I thought that you would be interested in hearing too. I mean, you know, these are all super experienced knitters and they're like, why is this hard for me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think, I think when it is hard, that's when it's good to have even, you know, make yourself a little checklist mm -hmm. so that you can kind of know, okay, I'm on this row, you know, and and then you have it, you can even do it in columns, right? So some of my students that, you know, feel like they need to kind of, you know, if they don't have the companion or something, you know, that old index card or a piece of paper, right? And just oh, yeah. make it a little grid and then check off, okay, this is row one, this is row two, this is row three, this is row four. 
and then you can kind of repeat, you know, and do the same thing. So that's another way to account, so to speak, for where you are in the, the row by row, as well as um, how many you're doing overall to get to this point, so you match this point. Gotcha, thank you. Yeah, yeah, and there's Thanks no- so much. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no right or wrong. And definitely, Alice, I would echo that as well. I think it's those folks who like make themselves the visual diagrams that it really, it really does help because if you can make it sense to you and it could look different for every single person on the Zoom, I think that's huge. Is it just tally marks for some people? Is it boxes? Yeah. Yep. And thanks yeah. for being here, Alice. We're so happy that you're here again. Well, I can't stay the whole time. I have to go get my COVID booster. Oh, geez. Okay. Actually, so I want to be sure. So so two things that I wanted to tell everybody while you're here, Alice. One is I had a Scudic Bay sign up just today in the shop. She's from, I forget where, but she like had seen it on our social media and she was browsing your Ravelry page and she was in the shop and she was like, I'm buying yarn. Let's do this. So Brand new Scudic yes. person out there. Yep. Um, Love it. And Alice, do you want to tell us about a special new pattern that just launched? So there is a new pattern that just launched, actually. Um, so just yesterday was actually, a, um, it was a special day in our family. Anyway, there is reference in the uh, introduction to this pattern for that special person. Um, but it is called the Pac Monadnock hat. Um, and it is written in five sizes. I can go grab them so you can sort of see if you like. Um, they will, there will be samples in the shop um, the end of September, um, but they are online in the interim on Ravelry. And it's sized for baby, toddler, child, um, teen, adult, which actually I don't want people to be confused with that. It fits a head circumference of 20 to 22 inches. So it fits my head. And then the adult size is a larger head circumference, 22 to 24. So if you had like a fellow that had a larger head or you had a larger head, um, you can accommodate that. But I'll go grab um, them so you can see if you like. Yay, yeah, do it. Maybe we'll open up another question while you're zipping out for a second. And there's a 20% off discount actually through Saturday. Um, just put in the coupon code PACMANADNOC. And is it so, all caps or lower or? Um, just capital P and capital M, but then just put in PACMANADNOC and then you'll get the discount. I'll be right back with um, I just put that in the chat too. And let's see, Barbarina, do you have a question? Oh no, wow, Alice is back. That was fast. I sorry. Yeah, you just zipped out, zip back. Okay. I did. They were on my living room. So this is the little um baby one, which um fits, you know, a little one. And the circumference, they're really stretchy too. This is done with gorgeous Katmandu, which is at the shop. So you can go ahead and get it. But um, so I designed it for a intro to hat knitting kind of situation. Um, but of course, being me, I needed to add a little bit of texture for interest. Um, so that's the baby. This is the toddler. Uh, this is the child size, which actually my granddaughter was just wearing this. So it's a whole picture of um, being messed up. Um, so the child size, you can see, so just a little bit of texture. And um, this is the one that fits me and I'll throw it on my head. So you can kind of see how it fits. So it's just, you know, kind of nice warm room for when it gets cold outside. My hair is kind of a mess today, so you can't quite see it. Um, and then this is the um, larger side, which would fit like, you know, my six foot, 210 my six foot two son so that's that mm, nice. thank you and congratulations thank you thank you thank you yeah i may have a surprise coming for you guys too next week mm. when i come up on or next the 30th when i come up awesome 
Um, I'm going to actually make sure to link to that new pattern in the show notes for this video too. Um, and maybe I'll look for the, the code so I can include that through Saturday. That's exciting. Yes. yes. Any favorites, cues, or, you know, whatever that you like, if you like it. Um, thank you. Awesome. Great. Thanks again, Alice. So, okay, Barbarina, you are up. There. I normally am in Montpelier, Vermont, but I'm currently in Western Maine, driving home from the wonderful cruise that uh, Kristen was also on. So I am really persevering. This is swatch number four <laughs> for this sweater. Oh my gosh. And I just, Arroyo and I were not, we weren't able to achieve it. But I'm just finding it a testimonial that even if you achieve gauge, you got to like the fabric. So with swatch three with Arroyo, I did achieve gauge and I could just tell I was not going to be happy with the fabric. Um, I've changed needle size so many times. I am at 17 and a half stitches per four inches, but I think I'm going to go with it. Um, and just I'm at, I'm at 30. Eight, and I think I'm going to go with the size number three, which is 36 and a quarter inches, and just fervently hope it fits. <laughs> Any thoughts? Um, so you said that you're measuring 38, is that right? I measure 38, and you say negative um, two inches, zero to two inches E. So I thought if I went with a 36.25 inches. Mm -hmm. And you're getting um, how many stitches? 17, to... 17 stitches to four inches in the stocking net. So it's going to be a little bit, so I think that should be fine. Yeah, I definitely would go negative E's as opposed to positive, yeah. Yeah, I think that should be good. And I mean, I really, I, this is Rios um, and I love this fabric. I mean, the, the color for the Arroyo was gorgeous, but it was just so loosey goosey. I was afraid it was going to stretch and just kind of hang yeah. and not have great yeah. fit. So. For and the yarn color. Lovely. Congratulations. Is it, is it, oh, I, is it sorry? Sorry, I was going to say it's Ceresa is the Rios color. It is. Big, big fan. It's beautiful. Okay. And I, I teach knitting and I am such an advocate for my students to do swatching because it's not just about matching gauge. It's about liking the fabric that you make. Because to put all that effort in and then have a sweater that the fabric isn't right is just so sad. So I'm... I'm following my own advice and I feel so silly because I literally started swatching mid-August. So maybe I'll have a sweater by December, but I'm sure I'll love it. <laughs> you know, what's the rush? Right. Yeah. Right. It's a process to enjoy. Yes. Yes. And Absolutely. I actually do like swatching. Well, yay. Um, okay. Thank you. Next up we have Tracy. Hi, Tracy. Hi. Also back from the cruise. I feel so much better with my shower now. Um, so th this is mine here. It's um, the DK plush on the round forage and I'm loving it, but I am looking ahead because I'm currently doing the fronts and then I'll be picking up and doing all the way around. What I'm wondering is how do I know if I have enough yarn to make the three quarter or the full length sleeve? So there's actually, believe it or not, because the three quarter length sleeve is wider um, than in the long sleeve is more tapered, it is really only about a 60 yard difference between the two. Oh, so it's more a matter of the fit. If we want it to fit closer, we do the long sleeve and looser is the three quarter sleeve. Yeah. So now the other no. caveat that I say, yes, yes. And the oh. other caveat I say is if you're kind of like not sure what length you want to go for, for your sleeves, you can do the band, right? 
And then you can have some sleeves on one needle and put some sleeves on the other needle and just knit. And if you have a little scale, you can kind of weigh <laughs> and see where you're at um, regarding the yarn um, amount. And you can kind of almost play yarn chicken and go as far as you want. <laughs> okay, because I, I was just, you know, I'm looking in here and I've got two full skeins left plus you know a good bit of the one where I'm I've almost completed one front and I'm going to do the other I'm like that's a lot of stitches how much yarn am I going to use doing the band around yeah. it yeah so okay so I will I will go with it Long Alice can I ask that can I ask a clarifying question too, which is just so like, cause I'm taking my notes per usual. Um, so, so three quarter length sleeve wider, long sleeve tapered. I get that. And you mentioned, so like, cause what I've been telling people as they're picking out yarn is the pattern's written to encompass both sleeve lengths. You don't need to worry. So you were just saying there's a like 60 yard difference between the two. I think so. It was -ish. Like let me pull up the pattern here so I don't misquote myself, but um, yardage. Uh, subtract 10 to 60 yards um, if you're working the three quarter length sleeves. Okay. Where, where okay. is that? Where it's sort of, um, it's on the second page where there's like all of this technical stuff that, mm -hmm when you design it my tech editor will send it back and like there are extra spaces or there's like punctuation that is very specific for how a pattern is written that always comes back with like suggestions to improve um it's right in that section underneath where it says yardage um thank you so, yeah absolutely that being said, you know, if you're like working along and you're like, you know, I think I want to do a hybrid. I think I'd rather have the sleeves a little bit wider than I would, you know, but do longer. I would definitely go for the um, little method. If you have a food scale, just, you know, click on grams. And then if you weigh your yarn, you can kind of, you know, go along and see how you're doing and work two sleeves at the same time. Ah, good. Thank you. Sure. Absolutely. Um, well, I, I see Jane, you've got your hand up here. Do you have a question for us? Nice to see you tonight. Hi, I'm Jane. I'm, excuse me. I'm from Dubois, Pennsylvania. Um, yeah, I have a question. <clears throat> I, when I, I just finished the mid body shaping and I must've skipped the row about measuring because then I measured it and I should be at 13 inches blocked. So I'm ready to separate front and back. And I think I'm at 12 and a half is, will that make a huge difference? And it's not blocked. So am I okay there? So I think it will be okay. I mean, the reality of the situation is that there is so much texture in this sweater pattern that that's why it specifically says blocked. Um, so when you're thinking about it, think about when I did my swatch, what did my, you know, moth block to? What did my double moth block to? And that'll give you a good um, estimate um, because when you do block, it is gonna change. Okay. I think I'm gonna hold my yarn up and I don't know if you can see it or not. I love this oh, yarn. Hold on, wait, wait just one second. Let me um let me get the spotlight up. Okay, thanks, Jane. Is is can you see this? Oh you... wow. Okay, and I love the yarn. It's probably now that I have it done, can you see it? It's mm. probably too dark because the pat the stitches don't show up and I'm trying to see. But what do you think? I mean, they do show yeah, up. I think it's going to be gorgeous. And honestly, I've seen a lot of people doing it in dark yarns and the texture does show. It's just a little bit different. Look, I mean, yeah. mine is actually going to be dark as well. And I'm doing that this time too. But I think it's okay. beautiful. Actually. I love the yarn. It's the plush DK in, all, in After Midnight. And I picked it because I love the color. 
And then as I went along, I thought, mm. but my son, who's a, actually a knitwear designer, I was with him in Cape May, and I showed him the yarn and he loved it. And he said, oh, no, you can see, you can see. So anyhow, I don't know if I had it to do over again, I probably would have picked a lighter color, but whatever. Um, so just, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I think I'll do another one. But just to clarify, so I've done the mid body shaping. I'm going to separate to front and back, right? And I'm going to put each front and back on different needles, right? And mm -hmm. so to clarify the other lady's question, when I go back to working on the fronts and the backs for the mo double moss, I'm back to one, two, three, four row. Correct? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yes. I'm because I did yep. the one, two, one, two for the little decreases, but now I'm back to one, two, three, four. I'm the one <laughs> I'm old school. I'm on graph paper. Okay. <laughs> Great. If graph paper were trees, that is I'm good. just gonna say that's not that's not old school. That's just how we do it. So okay. no judging. <laughs> okay. All righty. Okay. And Thank you. um and Jane, I'll just say too that with the darker yarns, um, like for example, I actually I was looking at Tracy's beautiful one in forage and I tried to capture it taking a picture of it and Forage is a really hard yarn to capture. And I was actually talking with Rachel from On The Round just today when she was delivering more yarn to the shop. And I was like, I tried to take a beautiful picture of Forge and it's hard. And she was agreeing. But after midnight, I think would have a similar effect. You know, the yarn is not flat, solid, dark. It has the lighter little bits. And I think actually um, that like, especially your moss stitch sections are going to really catch the light a little bit with the lights in the dark. So I think you will see it and, and, and hopefully you'll be, you'll be happy with it at the end. Well, no, um, but I, oh, the color and the look there, there's little flecks of green. Mm -hmm. It nice. is amazing yarn. Yeah. We love it. But yeah, I we may love have to yarn. A lighter color. Um, I see that Lori has a hand up, but I also wanted to welcome Kristen and Kristen, I'm going to spotlight you for a minute. Kristen's at home. Usually she's at the shop having knit night and she's at home because she was on the knitting cruise, worked a whole day with me. Thank goodness I wasn't by myself and um, she was a little <laughs> tired by the end, but here she is. Hi, Kristen. Hi. I thought I'd hop on because I never get to do this because I'm always working. So I wanted to see everybody and say hi. Um, I'm a little tired, but I'm trying to stay up till nine <laughs> so I can sleep all night. How are you, Tracy? Tracy was on the cruise also. At doing well now that my, my number one priority was getting a real shower. So yeah, I'm, I'm doing well. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm behind you all on my project, I think, which is, I think, pretty standard. I am. I'm about there. Ooh. But I'm loving the yarn, loving the color. Yeah. So that's where I'm at. There's light behind me, so it looks funny. But that's where I'm at. So. Okay. All right, let's get back to Lori. You've got your hand up. What's yeah, a uh, quick, quick question. I don't know why, but blocking always scares me. Um, you know, how, what is the best way to block? Do you do you like soak the yarn or do you just spray it? I know someone steamed it. I, I could use some advice on that. So we actually we have a whole little blog post right on our website that I think was linked in the last week's email. Um, but I can I can pop the link in our show notes from today's recording. But essentially, you know, the concept is pretty simple. You're going to fill the sink with water. A lot of people use hot. Some people use lukewarm, whatever. Um, and you're going to take your wool wash and add a little bit to that sink. Um, submerge your knit. You don't want to like, obviously, like, do a lot of manipulation you're just kind of like patting it down and what you'll feel in your hands is you'll feel like all the little bubbles come up um and so you just want to sort of like help it you know soak in that water down 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 and then like i just leave mine go off do some things then eventually i remember like oh yeah that thing is blocking 
Um, what I do, and I don't know if, if other folks do this, I will often throw it into my washing machine to spin the water out. Um, if I have something very delicate and I feel uncomfortable about that, I will also just sort of plop it in a, a sieve or strainer and just like let the water and the gravity just sort of like get some of the excess out and then I'll sort of smush more water out. And then I'll usually lay it between a couple towels, roll that up and like stand on it. So I'm really squeezing a lot more water out. And then at that point, I, um, you can use blocking mats. Uh, we've talked on here before about my, my preferred method is a yoga mat because I happen to have one here. And I lay that on the floor. I put my, my finished garment there on the yoga mat. And what's helpful in a pattern like Alice's is those, those dimensions on the final page where you can see like how, like have your, have your measuring tape handy. Um, I actually like an actual like, carpenter's measuring tape because it's firm and it doesn't wiggle around like a like a cloth or, or plastic one will and then I'll just sort of get it into shape and it's kind of a lot of like pat 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 squish 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 pat 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 squish 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 and getting it kind of in its form and then I just like turn on a fan in front of it and leave it going overnight and the next morning you maybe want to flip it over um, the nice thing about a mat uh, blocking mats or a yoga mat is that it's not absorbing water like a towel would. There were a lot of years where I put my knits on a towel to block and that was silly because it's just gonna be soggy. So that's the short version, but you can definitely read more about that on the blog post too. Right. Thank you. Um, and Ginny says she's got a friend who uses a salad spinner to get the water out of socks when she's blocking or washing them. I love that. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I see that Lucy. Hey, Lucy, how are you? Lucy, you've got your hand up. How's it going? Yeah, there. Good. I am only about eight rows away from finishing up my back. Woo! Yay! Um, and it's plush DK, always a bridesmaid. Beautiful. So the colors, I didn't um, alternate skeins, but... It's just the way the color, the flecks of color come out with always a bridesmaid. Mm -hmm. But I really like it. And I think if it's going to fit the way I hope it will, maybe one in like a deeper red in the Katmandu would be nice for the fall just to take the dog out for just mm -hmm. a little cover up with the long sleeves and maybe a little longer. That's my thought. I love it. It's so, that's so awesome. And there's another knitter who's using always a bridesmaid, I believe. And, um, and she's just loving how it knits up, loving the feel of that yarn. And yours looks really, really, really pretty. Yeah. I'm anxious to get, I'm anxious to work on the fronts and, and I'm able to try it on and see what happens. Right. Cause I did I the, also, the TVs. And you did the negative ease, and I remember you were a little nervous about that. Oh, I'm still nervous, but I'm going with it. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, somebody, somebody who was arriving for knitting group before I was leaving the shop um, was on her second sleeve. It's going crazy. That's Isa. Hi, Isa, if you watch. Um, and so that was looking gorgeous. And she was like, "Yeah, I'm already thinking about my second one." So I put, it's just so fun. I put it down for a moment for some reason and then picked it back up and my barber cord came out of one of my sides Ooh. I know and then I had to find my three stitch markers because they didn't fall in the same place and I managed to get oh. all the stitches back but it's like no you can't do this no oh dear I know that was Thank scary for a moment and Lucy remind everybody where you're coming in from today I'm in northeastern Pennsylvania Awesome. Anybody else care to share uh, or have a question? You're just focusing. A lot of you are focusing now. Has everybody shown theirs yet? Did I miss that part? People have just been sort of popping on and chatting and, and uh, so we haven't done 
haven't done a full share. So if you haven't talked tonight and you feel like sharing, we'd love to see how you're coming along. Maybe someone's shy. Oh, oh it looks like Therese. Hello, Therese from Spain. There we go. Um, my mouse isn't working, so I have to touch my screen all the time. So I kind of came to a standstill this week because I blocked it, which I like to block before picking up the stitches. That really helps a lot. Um, so I blocked it, and then it sat on the blocking for like five days. Oh, and then, wow. so I picked it up today because the other thing is I didn't do the shoulders uh, before I blocked it because I wanted everything to lay out flat. Um, and then, so today I did the shoulders and then I also, cause I hate, I just hate picking up all those stitches. I don't care about the arms, but for some reason that whole, you know, but but I'm definitely, I saw the email you sent and I'm definitely team blocking, especially pre-blocking because being able to pick those up, not only that, but when you have it on the mat to be able to like, okay, so there's like a hundred and some on each side, the back is already on um, uh, stitch holders. So that's fine. But it's like, okay, so I have to section, I'm like freaky because it's like, it has to be sectioned off so that I've got the equal amount on each section all the way up. So it takes forever, mm -hmm. but it's such a quick knit. So once you actually get started, it's, you know, it goes pretty quickly. So I didn't start until after probably three o'clock this afternoon. And I've got, um, I don't know if you can see. So I got everything mm. done and I've got that. I think what there's eight, nine, ten rows total because you're doing a thing of four twice, then another mm -hmm. two uh, rows. So I think I'm on uh, row five or six at this point. So I'm I'm pretty close. And then tomorrow I'll do the um, the sleeves. And yes, I've already I've already started thinking about what yarn I want for the second one and what color. So, yeah. well, it's, just, it's, it's so easy, you know, and it goes really quickly. Now, I have to say I'm retired, so I do whatever I want whenever I want. So if I want to, I want to leave it on the blocking mat, like, that's where it stays. But otherwise, it's like if I want to work on it, I will work on it. So but it goes quickly and it's fun because it's one of those. Like right now for tonight's meeting, I'm working on something that's just stuck in it, stuck in it, stuck in it, stuck in it, which gets to be so boring. But there's really none of that here. And and I don't mind purling. So the flat isn't a problem for me. So yeah. Um, thank you so much for, for staying up and, and zooming in with us tonight, Therese. Um, and also I just have to announce something really cool, which is that Kristen set up international shipping so we can do that now for you in spain yay <laughs> um i see that priscilla has a hand up hey priscilla maybe oh are you there oh hi hi can you see me we can see oh, you yeah. and it looks like are you oh, wearing an anchor um, well, I'm a slacker. I'm like way behind everybody else. Um, but I do have a question. I'll, I'll show you what I'm working on. I, this is mine. Beautiful. Oh, pretty. It's uh, mm. Barocco Lannis Light, something I had in my stash. Um, mm -hmm. But on page five, where it says mid body, right front, back and left front. I've mm -hmm. done the setup row and it tells you at the end to proceed to row two below, but then there's a row one above that. So I'm not really sure what that row one is. 
Um, I'm looking at separate right front, back, and left front on page six. Is that right? Or am I on the wrong page? Okay. You said page five. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yep. Um, so this is where you do the setup and then you switch as a right side row and then you skip that row one and go straight into row two, wrong side. And then from there, you'll fall into the one through four. Okay, so the row one, you don't have to do anything with that. Not for that first one, because essentially the setup is your row one. It's that that was an area that was like a little confusing for somebody else too. Um, me, but yes, it was confusing for me, and I um, all the all I can tell you the only difference between row one and uh row the setup row is that instead of slipping markers you're just placing the markers otherwise the row is just the same and it just didn't make sense to me my logical brain to do setup and then skip the first row so I couldn't I couldn't make it logically work and I called Eris <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> and then I felt silly but so you're not alone and okay. I'm, I'm not much farther than you honestly I'm, I'm a little bit farther but not much so yeah okay thank you sure we like to say there's no slackers in these knit alongs um everybody's at their own pace and we actually we we have um one more zoom next week and so we will have um, a little, you know, we'll, we'll join up just like we do. If you want to send me a photograph of your process of where you're at, like, let's say I haven't really thought about it, but if you want to send me any photos of like where you are now, or if you're trying, a, trying it on in process, or maybe you've got it on a blocking mat, whatever it is, if you feel like sending me a picture by like Monday, I am sometimes I try to throw together a little photo kind of a slideshow for us to share. Um, and I'll put that out in the email this week as well. Um, but it's always just nice to see where people are at. And again, it's all sorts of a spectrum from people who are still working on a swatch, you know, and uh, they got their swatch going and folks who are on a second sleeve already. So yeah, we welcome everybody. Yeah. Any last thoughts, last questions for us? I have oh, a question. Looks like Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Hi. Um, are we in a block again with the sleeves? Like, or after we yeah. finish? I haven't read. If, I I haven't read mm -hmm. that far yet. But yep, yep. You'll do a, you'll do a a final for real block. You know, once everything is all together together. Mm -hmm. Okay. More stress. <laughs> Well, we love this hour in one of our previous knit alongs, Bev, who joins us for our Zooms and knit alongs. Bev coined the, the little phrase that we love. It's the fastest hour of the week. Where does the time go? So Do it. it's nice to spend it with all of you knitters from all over. And we really appreciate you participating with us. And it's so fun to have Kristen. Thanks. It's fun to see you all. It's nice to be on this side for once. Oh, how about, could we do like a group Zoom? Do, do people feel okay doing like, just to like turn on your camera, do a little smile and I'll do a screenshot. Would that be okay? Sure. All right. If you don't feel comfortable, just you can, um, you can just turn, keep your camera off. That's fine too. Okay. Let's see if I can make this work. Okay. Cheers. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> nice to well, see you. Well, it's, yeah, it's just about the top of the hour. So we're going to wrap up for tonight. But again, thanks for being with us. And we'll see you next week for our final Zoom for this knit along. It's gone by so quickly. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, y'all. Thanks, thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.